Hello Almighty. Today I am going to recap the movie. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. If you like this video please do subscribe and give me a like. It is the wedding day of Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. However, the arrival of Lord Cutler Beckett in Port Royal disrupts proceedings, as both Will and Elizabeth are arrested on the charge of setting free an enemy of the crown, Captain Jack Sparrow, whom Beckett also wishes to track down. Jack has his own set of troubles to worry about, however. A debt he made with Davy Jones to raise the Black Pearl from the depths of the ocean 13 years ago is set to be paid, and Jack does not wish to bind himself to a lifetime of servitude as part of Jones' crew. Instead, he sets out to locate the dead man's chest and the key that opens it, in order to gain control over Jones himself. Jack escapes from a Turkish prison with a drawing of the key, and sets off to track it down. Meanwhile, Cutler Beckett strikes a deal with Will Turner, wishing for him to obtain Jack Sparrow's compass in exchange for a full pardon. Will remains dubious, but is left with no other choice. By this point, Jack has begun his voyage, though is unable to discern any resolute course from his compass. He descends to the lower deck to search for more rum, where he encounters William Turner, Bootstrap Bill. Turner had chosen to serve Davy Jones after being sent to the bottom of the ocean by Hector Barbosa, as a cursed man, unable to die. He warns Jack that his time is up, and that Jones has released the Kraken to bring Jack in. Before departing, Bootstrap marks Jack with the black spot, a sign that the Kraken is coming for him. Terrified, Jack orders Josh Amy Gibbs to head for land, any land, to avoid this terrible beast. In the confusion, Jack the monkey knocks Sparrow's hat into the sea, where it is carried far from its owner. It ends up in the hands of two fishermen, whose ship is suddenly dragged under the water by an unseen creature. In the prisons at Fort Charles, Will informs Elizabeth of his plan to track down Jack, but Governor Weatherby Swan does not trust Will to free both himself and Elizabeth. As Will begins his search in Tortuga, Weatherby procures passage back to England for himself and his daughter. Will's search ends on Isla de Pelagostos, where the Black Pearl has been beached. As he explores the nearby tropical forest, Will is captured by the native Pelagostos and taken to a mountaintop village. There, he finds Jack acting as chief of the tribe, and though Sparrow does nothing to help Will in his predicament, he does whisper, save me, before Will is taken away. Back in Port Royal, Governor Swan releases Elizabeth and makes for a rendezvous with Captain Hawkins, only to find Beckett's henchman, Mercer, waiting for him. Elizabeth, however, uses Mercer's appearance as a diversion, escaping back to Fort Charles, where she confronts Lord Beckett at the end of a pistol. Beckett makes a deal with her, giving her the letters of Mark in exchange for Jack's compass. She leaves, and stows away, disguised as a sailor boy, aboard the Edinburgh trader. Meanwhile, Another prison break has occurred, and now Pintle and Rigetti are making their way to Pelagosto Island along with the prison dog. They reach land, and set about preparing to take the pearl as their own. Elsewhere on the island, Will Turner is being held inside one of two bone cages suspended over a ravine, along with the surviving crew of the pearl. Gibbs informs him that the Pelagostos believe Jack is a god in human form, and intend to free his divine spirit by roasting and eating his, fleshy prison. The crew attempts to swing their cages across the chasm to climb up the other side. However, Leech spurs his crewers on to compete with Will and the others, and in their haste, tumble from the side of the cliff and plummet into the ravine. This draws the attention of a sentry, who runs to warn the villagers. The sentry inadvertently buys Jack some time, as his arrival coincides with the Pelagostos attempt to roast Jack alive. He escapes while the villagers race to kill their prisoners, but meets further resistance as he makes his way through the village. As Will and the crew roll through the jungle, still trapped inside their cage, Jack falls into a ravine, though his fall is broken by the pole he is tied to, and a series of wooden bridges. The crew makes it back to the Pearl just as Pintle and Rigetti, recently escaped from jail with help from the prison dog, are attempting to commandeer the ship. Jack himself arrives pursued by the entire Pelagostos tribe, though manages to board the ship before they can catch him. Instead, their attention is drawn by the dog, who runs off into the jungle, chased by the natives. Once back on the water, Will reveals he requires Jack's compass, though Jack brushes him off, instead ordering Gibbs to head upriver. He then proceeds to explain, using Will's naivety concerning Davy Jones, that the key Jack is looking for will enable Will to rescue Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth herself has departed Port Royal on board the Edinburgh Trader, and begins to arouse the crew's superstitions when they come to believe her dress belongs to the spirit of a vengeful woman. By now, the Pearl's crew has taken to the longboats and heads up the Pantano River into Cyprus Forest, for a meeting with the voodoo priestess, Tia Dalma. There, Dalma senses a touch of destiny about Wool and tells the tale of Davy Jones to her audience. She reveals that Jones, once in love, tried to spare himself the heartbreak of losing his love by cutting out his own heart and locking it away in a chest. She also informs Jack that Jones keeps the key about his person at all times and offers him a jar of dirt, explaining that, as Jones is unable to set foot on land for another decade, Jack should keep land about him for protection. Dalma then divines the location of the Flying Dutchman, for which the Pearl sets sail. Will Turner volunteers to head over to what he believes is the Dutchman and negotiate for Jack's soul. However, he is unaware that the wrecked ship he boards is not Jones' ship, which bursts out of the water in front of him as Will explores the vessel. He is surrounded by Jones' crewmen, who have served for so long on the Dutchman that various sea creatures have been assimilated into their bodies. Will is knocked out and lined up with the survivors of the wreck. Davy Jones reveals himself, proposing a deal with any who would rather serve aboard his ship than face their final judgment in death. One man refuses, and is killed, while others are forced to agree. Jones realizes Will is neither dead nor dying, and demands to know his purpose. Will reveals that Jack Sparrow sent him to settle his debt, and Jones uses his supernatural power to bring himself, along with his crew, aboard the Black Pearl to confront Sparrow himself. Jack tries to tell Jones that he was only captain for two years until Barbossa's mutiny, but Jones refuses to accept that and reminds him he has introduced himself as Captain Jack Sparrow for all these years. Jack negotiates with Davy Jones, and is given three days to find 100 souls to serve Jones, the first being Will himself, still aboard the Dutchman. Jones removes the black spot, and Jack immediately heads for Tortuga to harvest the souls. Elizabeth is also on her way to Tortuga, after again using the Edinburgh crew's superstitions against them. She makes them believe the spirit is asking them to go to Tortuga, and writes the name in oil on the ship's deck, setting it on fire to get their attention. As a pirate band played in the cantina, Gibbs recruited sailors to sail aboard the Pearl, and ultimately to be handed over to Jones, though manages only to recruit four. The fifth reveals himself as now former Commodore, James Norrington, having been disgraced after piloting his ship into a hurricane while pursuing Jack and the Black Pearl. He starts a bar brawl after attempting to shoot Jack, which is joined by Elizabeth as Jack and his crew sneak out. Elizabeth knocks Norrington unconscious before he can do any more damage, and he is thrown into the pigsty. Mercer watches these proceedings, and later offers Norrington a deal on behalf of Lord Beckett. Meanwhile, aboard the Flying Dutchman, Bootstrap Bill is reunited with his long-lost son after Jimmy Legg's orders, Mr. Turner, to secure the mast tackle. Both Turners attempt the procedure, and when Bill encounters his son, lets go of the line, causing Will to drop a hoisted cannon into the deck. For his apparent mistake, Jimmy Legg's prepares to whip Will, but Bootstrap intervenes, intent on taking his son's punishment. Davy Jones appears questioning this kindness as Bootstrap reveals to the crew and Will that he is the boy's father. Cruelly, Jones forces Bootstrap to whip his own son, though Bootstrap insists it was an act of compassion compared to the severe lashing Jimmy Legs would have inflicted. Back in Port 